Hi there folks, this is Paul Bars signing in for a very quick video, something I need to record for one of my clients, so I thought I would just also make this public, just to share a bit of information if I can about video sharing, video hosting, especially when you've got lots and lots of them, um, and I'm talking to you today about screencast.com. Now this is one, of course, of many different places where you can host your videos, such as Amazon S3. Uh, I'm not even going to go through all the names. There's a lot of them out there. But I looked at some of the options and I came up with this one, best solution for my business. Of course, it was recommended by a friend. I have the Pro account, which is certainly very affordable and worthwhile looking at. And uh, I mean, I've got a bucket load of videos on this, which are all part of my membership site, Maximum Success University, and some of my other sites as well. But let's have a quick look at just how to get in there, how to set things up, and well, why I believe it's such a good option. First of all, here's the URL, screencast.com. Now, I'm on my main page at the moment, and what you can see here are my public access videos. Okay, these public access videos are not protected in any way. I'm quite happy for people to actually be able to look at these videos, share them, including these particular folders with some extra content in them as well. However, I'm going to, just up here on the right hand side, a little bit outside of view, sign into my password protected area and give you an idea of what you can do with the screencast and how simple it is just to set things up. Now you can see here that we've got all these other folders which are, well they're not quite so visible, that's because they are in the protected areas and so on. This one of course is public, these ones here, these ones here are not. And this is the way that I've set it up. For example, if I come in here and I come to, um, let's see, have a quick look at, well, let's go into eBusiness Mastery, for example, which is one of my programs. I open up this folder. This particular program, of course, shows you how to build up a website, the full sales funnel, the whole thing. All of these videos are hosted within it. Okay, I've got 45 videos in this part of this particular folder. Now, once I've created a new folder and I want to then share that, I have the various options just here. I can share it with a single URL. There you go. You want to pause this video, copy and paste that. You can have a look at it. I can grab the embed link or I can embed the entire thing. If I just grab that code, I'll come down and I'll open up a uh, notepad. There we go. And there's all the code for me to just copy and paste straight into my website really really simple so that's how easy it is to then share your particular videos very quick very simple very easy now the folder itself has been closed so that you know you can't get access to it unless of course I give you that specific URL let's have a look at how easy it is to create a folder and whenever you're um, putting together you know, some packaging, particularly say like a membership site, you want to group things together in folders. So we'll just call this one Homework Folder. Okay, if we have a website and uh, one of my clients has a fantastic website on putting together homework help for kids, and we would call this folder Homework Folder, which is going to be an English, maths, science, all of that kind of thing. View, view the page template. Now, there is a default template. I've created my own template which I'll select just there I can make it public iTunes feeds and so on I don't want because this is going to be a closed one currently the privacy mode is set to public so as I'm creating that folder I want to change that and it will then bring up these options and mark it as hidden now that's what these ones here are I can make them so that you need an individual password to get access to, but when you've got a members membership site, well, that's going to make things a bit more difficult if everyone needs an individual password for each individual section, particularly seeing they've already logged into my members area, that's enough. I can go one step further, authenticated, which means they also need to have an account here on a screencast, so I'm just sharing. Not much good for my purposes. This one is enough. So I can, like I showed you before, embed that content into my site using the code given. So I will now save that. It comes back here. 
It's called the homework folder. I'm not going to bother with the description, but I could if I wanted to. Okay, it's current privacy is public. I need to, I thought I just changed that. I may not have pressed the save button. Come back, I'll just do that again. Hidden and save. There we go. That now comes up correctly. And notice that this is now gone. And I will now save that. And then the whole folder will be done. And that's it. That's how easy it is. Now, I'm just suggesting that we do things that way because, you know, different categories within your membership area, if that's what you're going to use it for, different sections within your website, if you group them together. So in order to now upload files, I can just click this open button. If I want to edit what I've just done, I can click there or delete it just there. So if I open up this new folder and then to upload the files, coming over here to upload content. Now when it comes to uploading content, the files need to be under 100 megabytes if you're going to use the browser that comes up here or of course I can use a desktop uploader which I've done with some of my videos which happen to be more than 100 megabytes. Exactly the same process, quite simple. But from here all I need to do is click browse. That will then open up my computer area. I'm just in my business videos section here and I would find what it is that I want to uh, upload from there into that particular folder. Let me just see if I can find a, a small one. There we go. Just like that and off she goes. Starts uploading straight away. I'll just press pause while that happens. Okay that is now done. If I come back to my normal screen size. Let me just quickly do that. Move the window over. You can see here that she's ticked off and I can just close that. I like to shrinky dink the windows down a bit, make it a little bit easier. And there we have the new video with my various sharing options ready for me to embed into my website. Now I can also go and have a look at this particular video by clicking on the view. This is my custom page. Remember I said I set that up? This is my custom page. I can send someone to this page or I can embed it in my website. So this was a little video I had on just uh, setting up ClickBank and membership sites and the customer can come along and just press play there or as I said embed it in the page. That's it. Really simple, really easy. If I just come back here one moment here we go, here's our homework folder, the new one we just set up, and that's it. I suggest that you would set up a separate folder for each different category of videos, as you can see I have here. Homework help, internet marketing, introduction videos, the master plan, which was one of my products, uh, Mega Month, another product, membership sites, another product, mini site graphics, another product. I've got each individual product's videos, each in their own folder. Why? So that if I need to come back in here and edit something, for example, in the eZine Publishing section, all I've got to do is open this particular folder and straight away I've got access to these files. Now, these ones, which I wanted to show you, are MP3 files. If I click on open one of them, it's not going to be a video, it's just the audio. Same thing, great for streaming on the website. Now, can you upload other files? Well, yeah, you, you can upload other files. Um, I don't see why you would need to or why you would have to, but for example, this one here, these four videos, this is an image, not a video or an, uh, an MP3. But it gives you plenty of room. Now, just quickly, I'm going to click over to my account. And I wanted to show you that currently, as I said, I'm a pro user. Um, and I have here my bandwidth usage which is reset on the 24th of each month. Let's see, it's about the 10th at the moment, somewhere thereabouts. I'm not even close. Okay, storage usage. All right, I got up to 25 gigabytes here. I'm almost halfway and currently that costs, I think, about 10 bucks a month. Now that could change, but that's what it is right now. Now these are this is the bandwidth of, from within my uh, members area uh, in particular. And I mean, we're talking a few hundred members are getting access to these products every single um, every single uh, month, and it doesn't use up that much bandwidth because the files that I've been uploading 
if I come back to my library, I prefer, and this is interesting, and I should just point this out, I upload, preferably, an FLV flash versus an MP4 video. Okay, they, they show up slightly differently in the way in which um, they then appear on the page. I prefer the FLV, so I always convert files to FLV flash to then upload into here rather than MP4. They're more compressed, which means they take up less space, use less bandwidth, they load faster, and they have a different sort of way of appearing on the screen, which is really, really good. So, drop in, have a quick look around if you want, screencast.com users slash Paul Bars. There's my URL just there. Hey, and while you're at it, Come in and have a look at some of these free videos I've got right there, including, oh, I love this one, The Viking Kittens. If you're a Led Zeppelin fan, which I am, you're really going to enjoy this particular video. So that's it for this little, little tutorial, just a quick one, showing you how easy it is to use screencast.com. Okay, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.